I didn't know how to present what I was looking for and what I could be to a person. And it was very awkward for me because I always felt like I was saying, well, I know I'm in a relationship. I know that's not ideal. And everything was about apologizing about it instead of saying, hey, I offer this really unique opportunity <laughs> to kind of see somebody without worrying too much about what's going to happen. Hi everyone, welcome to Poly Curious. I am Fer, your host, and today, Mariah and I chat with Jenny and Chris. They have been together for nearly a decade, exploring polyamory, and they are really fun and intelligent people. So this was one of those conversations that I had to break up into two parts because there were so many great anecdotes and lessons that it was just really hard to edit down. So in this first part of the conversation, you'll hear about their introduction to non-monogamy. They actually went straight into non-monogamy from the very beginning. And of course, there were some lessons and missteps along the way, but they definitely made it work. In the second part of this interview, we actually go deeper into an experience they had when Jenny fell in love with someone else who she had been seeing for like four years. And this other person wasn't super comfortable being the secondary and wanted to be more of a primary and all the difficulties and lessons that came with that. In that second episode, we also go into how Jenny got into organizing events. She has this amazing platform called Space Invaders, and they have all sorts of events for non-monogamous people. And more recently, also for the general public, they have like holiday parties. And their next one is actually coming up. I already got my ticket. So if you want to stop by and say hi. I would love to see you if you are in New York. It's happening in Brooklyn on Thursday, April 20th, so 420. And even though this event is not specifically for non-monogamous people, because a lot of their events are, I'm sure that you could find a lot of community. And you can get tickets by following the link in the show notes. And there you can also find their Instagram if you want to stay tuned for other events that are more um, catered to non-monogamous people. I think their next one is in May. Before we start, I just wanted to quickly remind you that I am taking clients for relationship coaching. So if you feel like you might need some help in navigating non-monogamy, either on your own or with your partner, or just more generally, you want to learn how to better communicate, just make sure to shoot me a message on my Instagram at Polycures Podcast or to my email at polycuriouspodcast at gmail.com. And we can set up a free consultation where we can chat about how I might be able to help you with that. Okay, get ready for a super fun conversation with Jenny and Chris. Hi guys, I'm incredibly excited to have you tonight uh, at your lovely apartment with your lovely dog. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure you guys will have a lot to say because at least from the little I know you from afar, I can tell that you have a very special relationship. So I can't wait to actually get to hear what that means for you. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, we're super excited. And we love to talk. Uh, yeah, you got a little glimpse of our special relationship when you heard us bickering about the temperature when you came <laughs> in, <laughs> uh, which is like such a classic hashtag married thing to be doing but we were doing it for real yeah <laughs> i think we all do it in every relationship the temperature is always a thing i had like a very a very sweet uncle uh before our wedding we was, were already, i thought it was at the wedding and maybe it was at the wedding but it was like a point of no return and he mm -hmm. said the most important thing in a relationship is that your internal thermometers be aligned oh. and i was like oh shit <laughs> that's not, not even close we're 10 degrees off yeah, at, least. at least 10 like 15 or 20 but like it's a little too late for that sorry yeah. <laughs> but yeah uh, we're making it work yeah i have a heavy blanket and it's either the heavy blanket cuddles me or seth yeah, yeah, or <laughs> depending or on, on the temperature yeah it's like Seth at first but then you know when he gets tired <laughs> then i grab my heavy blanket uh so yeah that's a secret See, like non-monogamy, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta have someone to do it Outsource for you. Your you know? And you can't get jealous of the heavy blanket because sometimes the heavy blanket does a better job. <laughs> and you can. That's just life. 
I accept that. <laughs> now you do. You haven't always. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get we'll get to that. I, I definitely want to hear about that. But um, why don't we start by maybe learning a little bit more about you? I'm Jenny. I'm 39. I've lived in New York for about 10 years ish. We now live between New York and Miami, but New York is still feels like home, even though we spend only six months a year here. I am a freelancer. I do graphic design and marketing and branding, uh, and I produce events in New York that started off as um, non-monogamous friendly events and have sort of expanded into other types of events, but we've still kept that core of non-monogamy as a as a, a niche that we're we're operating out of um we throw parties is like the simplest way to put it <laughs> you me oh i'm uh chris and um yeah i grew up in chicago which actually kind of threw me towards this journey because i was very conservative and um almost I don't want to say religious, but uh, Midwestern, Midwestern vibe. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So when I moved to New York about 10 years ago, it uh, really opened my eyes to what was out there, you know? Mm. Um, so yeah, we, I moved to New York, met Jenny about a year after that. Um, I'm now 49 and a professional pilot for work. And uh, so, yeah, we've been on this journey for nine years ish, right? Married for seven? Relationship journey. Yeah, this relationship journey. To the moon. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, New York, once, once I got here, I realized it was a much, much different, more open-minded place than, than Chicago was, which was very intriguing and interesting to me. So. so, and you only moved to New York 10 years ago? 10 years ago, yeah, from the Midwest, so. And that's when you started your non-monogamous yeah, journey? Yeah, uh, I had no experience whatsoever um, when I was living in Chicago and knew, you know, I knew probably going back as far as college that I was curious about this stuff, but I, I had no outlets and no vocabulary for it and no, uh, friend group that I could talk to about it. So I kind of just kept it to myself. And, um, I had the extent of my experience coming from Chicago was two very awkward threesomes in Chicago with, <laughs> with, uh, uh, two previous girlfriends. So, oh, yeah. why were they awkward? Um, th there wasn't really a a lot of comfort level um, from my my partners in both of those situations. They were both uh, MFM threesomes, and I think there was just a lot of nerves and um, things not going smoothly <laughs> when it got down to to the the actual threesome, just because everyone was nervous. So. And were were they guys that they were interested in, or guys that you knew? Um, they one was a guy that uh, the previous girlfriend knew, and one was a guy that I knew mm. um, that my girlfriend was somewhat interested in. So, mm. yeah. Well, I'm glad you came back from those bad experiences. But yeah, I feel like. Threesomes can be like hit or miss, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's a lot to it's a lot to sure. coordinate, you know. And they were still exciting. They just compared to more recent times. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different now. Oh, so they, they were go. still exciting. Okay. Yeah, they were exceeded pretty pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, I relate to that though, because for me, it's just like oh, threesomes in particular are much more intimate and like more intimidating for me at least, and I like. Before I ever had my first threesome, only threesome. Oh, no, not only. First threesome. <laughs> it was just like, oh, I can go to an orgy. I can go to a play party, but a threesome scares me. <laughs> yeah, very different experience. Yeah, so she, yeah, so she had her first threesome after her first orgy, basically. You had a different uh, leveling up than most people. Cause I think most people think like, Oh, you add one person to a couple, like that's less intense than going to a play party. Right. There's all these people. And yeah, that's been my experience too, where like at a play party, there's enough people that you can kind of fade into the background if you want to, the focus isn't on you, but in a threesome, there's 
nowhere to hide. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And everybody can tell if one person is not having a good time. <laughs> um, yeah, it's when it when it works, it's kind of magical because it doesn't feel like it should work because there's so many factors against it actually going well. But sometimes it works really great. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious, Jenny, how did you kind of enter into this community? Um, I explored a little bit with my ex. We, for Valentine's, when I was first, I moved to New York after college for a couple of years and dated a guy here. And he asked me to find us a sexy party to go to for Valentine's. <laughs> and so I was like, I can do that. And went on Google <laughs> and like sexy party New York. <laughs> and I found chemistry, which is a party that still happens like 12 years later, 15 years later. I don't know how long ago this was, but um, we went to it and we had a really good time. Like we had fun. We like hooked up with other people Um I remember at one point, because, like, I had no idea how these things work. I was, like, sort of chatting with the woman who was the bartender, um, who I, I guess assumed that, like, the party had hired. And then at some point in the night, she, like, joined the play. And I was so shocked, like, oh, that's the bartender <laughs> from earlier. I didn't understand, like, how, yeah, like, she is down, obviously. <laughs> she's here. She's not just, like, a person who's just, like, these freaks are crazy while she's, like, <laughs> mixing drinks. She's She's involved. Um, but yeah, we had a great experience and kind of like walked away from it being like, okay, I checked that box. Cool. And, and didn't really, like, it didn't occur to us at the time. Um, and I was pretty young, so I just think like I wasn't ready for it, but it didn't occur to us that like, oh, this is something you can do. Like, these are people you could know in your regular life. It just was like a thing that we sort of went on vacation to mm. and did. So then I didn't think about it for a while. Um, and you just m made out. No, we, we like hooked up pretty heavily, like not like serious sex, but everything, but I guess I would say, but then we had, we broke up and while we were broken up, met this woman in a bar on my birthday and ended up taking her home and having this amazing threesome, getting back together and then dating. <laughs> was that threesome what brought you back together? <laughs> kind of what? <laughs> it kind of what? Like it wasn't really magical threesome and she just like sprinkled some fairy dust on our relationship and we like woke up the next day she she had left but we were still together in his apartment and just sort of looked at each other like oh i guess we should get back together that was, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just like what we got to do um and then we dated her for a little while as a couple and that was sort of my first experience with non-monogamy and she had a male partner and then the four of us were sort of seeing each other and she was a few years older than me and her male partner was even older and they were sort of helpful for me to say like what was what was available like they i sort of knew all this stuff was possible but i'd never seen it modeled for me in real life and it was just neat to see them navigate it so they like moved in together and i would ask like okay well so what happens now like what changes in your relationship and she would just be like well now we do this this the way so what 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 do you do when that happens <laughs> <laughs> i mean for them at least i think it was like just you know working out the logistics they had a really big apartment um one of those like dream new york apartments that was sort of uh i think it, it was a four bedroom or something so they could even like have dates on the same night oh at the same time potentially oh wow <laughs> yeah which is like not most new yorkers experience with this where like you have to coordinate going out when your partner is home with the date if that's what they would like you to do um, but then they got engaged and then they got married and I sort of like followed along on this journey with them and saw like oh it, it can be done all while like having a healthy relationship and like maintaining a, a normal yeah normal-ish life you know it just sort of seemed like they were doing it the way that made sense for them and I found that really inspiring because uh Monogamy has always been a challenge for me. <laughs> and uh, I've also seen a lot of relationships fail um, because of how challenging monogamy is. I mean, other factors too, I'm sure, but like that doesn't help. Mm. And I think for me, it helped reassure me that like it was possible to be in love with somebody and have a committed relationship, but just do it on your own terms. 
Yeah. So that's where it began for me. <laughs> yeah. Why why has monogamy always been a challenge for you? It just doesn't make sense. Duh. <laughs> it's so hard. Like, why is if it's how we're supposed to be, then why is this it's so hard? I mean, I, I think I'm I'm a moral but not religious person at, at all. So I don't have any of, of that stuff. But I do think like you should be you, you should fulfill the promises that you make to a person. Um, but then I've really struggled to not be attracted to other people or like when I have a connection with somebody outside of my relationship to not want to see where that connection goes. Um, and so like I did cheat in some past relationships and felt really bad about it. I think I always confessed and then it was a whole thing. Same. Ugh, and it was just a mess when I wish I just could have been like, yeah, like I, I'm interested in this person. Like, can I just see what that's about? And the ideal thing would be for my partner to have been like, yeah, cool. I love that for you. But like, that wasn't our, that wasn't our arrangement. <laughs> um, although if I had been more uh, aware of what I needed, I could have built that into the relationship in the front end. So I, I had relationships that started off monogamous and conventional, and then we kind of relaxed as time went on um, and had encounters with other people um, and things like that, but never a, a truly open relationship from the get-go until I met Chris and then I did have that. So that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> and ours started right from the beginning. We we met on OkCupid, okay which is, I guess, still out there, but it, it predated Tinder and at the, the time that we met on it, predated Tinder oh, yeah, and Hinge. Tinder. And... I love the marketing. It's like, okay, Cupid. It's like when dating apps were still like stigmatized, right? Yeah. So it's like, this is okay. This is like the okay one. Yeah, okay. yeah we're not, we're not going to overpromise. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be just okay. You're going to have okay dates. Yeah. But this like back then, back then in like the dark pre-app ages, like mm -hmm. was kind of the best thing that was around. Like I had a great time on okay cute but i had moved back to the well. city i like met a ton of cool people i had like some boring dates and that's sort of the worst thing that happened yeah so we met on that and um very quickly within the first couple dates started talking about our ideas of what a relationship might look like and non-monogamy was an interest for both of us we were coming at it from different angles because i had just gotten out of a long-term relationship and i was really excited to live in new york and be single and go on grown-up dates <laughs> <laughs> and you had been single for a really long time and were really attached to your independence and mm -hmm. you didn't want to have a serious relationship because you wanted to keep doing the grown-up dates and so we we aligned on that yeah yeah and it very quickly turned into i i, I think i fell in love with jenny much more quickly mm -hmm. because i i saw this person that i was already falling for and then in addition to that that was curious about continuing to explore this lifestyle and i was like oh my god jackpot <laughs> you don't know when i was falling you don't you. know you don't. <laughs> we were pretty much on the same track i think yeah yeah i love that idea of when i had that experience of starting a relationship from we're just going to be non-monogamous, even though I have no idea what I'm doing, that just led a really interesting journey and like being able to create something new out of nothing, Yeah, which was really cool. It's a trade though, right? Because if you have a monogamous relationship and you introduce the idea of, hey, I want to open up this relationship, you're pushing against like the things that are already established in the relationship, but you have trust and communication true to work with whereas if you start from a new relationship sure you don't have to you don't have to break down any habits that have already formed in over years in the relationship because you're just starting out but you don't have that shared language mm. and you don't know how much you can trust the other person yeah i was gonna say hard. that because i yeah i just interviewed someone who said i always recommend people to start monogamous because um that's what worked for me and then it just like made me reflect on you know how it's important to have that like trust right and security mm -hmm. because like when you don't know if you can trust this person then 
even even though you might be like in love with them, how can you be sure that they're actually going to come back if they go and see someone else for, for a date, right? Like, <laughs> like sure. what do you have that they don't have? Like, if it's not time and investment, right? Like, it's like, okay, well, we just met, we're, we fell in love. So why couldn't he or she go and fall in love with someone else as well? Like, what's the difference, right? But I don't know how you guys approached it. Uh, I'm sure that you had like conversations about it, but curious to hear if you like started together, separate, or what was like your first step into doing that as a couple? Actually, we started off pretty open and like pretty much anything goes. Um, and then. But that was before we had even established ourselves as a, like a primary couple, if I if I may. Mm, yeah, I guess I'm I'm talking about like once we decided like, okay, you're my boyfriend now. Uh, We're okay. in a relationship. What what does this mean? And it was sort of like, well, we call each other these things, but like it didn't really change what we were doing. We had to have like a, a really bad fight <laughs> <laughs> before we like realized that we had moved into a different phase with the relationship and we couldn't just keep doing this sort of like laissez faire, like you go do whatever you want, and I'll go do whatever I want mm -hmm. thing. Um yeah, to me, it's almost like there is that that fear of, oh, I'm going to lose this person. They're going to fall in love with somebody or they're going to go off with somebody else and forget about me or whatever. But it's almost worse, this sense to me that this person's not representing my interests when I'm not with them. Like they're not behaving in a way that's respectful to our relationship and our connection. Mm -hmm. And like that to me was the big trust thing. I don't know if I ever was really worried that you were going to leave. So much as just like you weren't going to behave in a way that felt good to me mm. when I wasn't with you. Sure. Yeah. I remember you had, uh, we had a few rules in place mm -hmm. when we were, were first starting out. Um, one of which was you were not comfortable with uh, taking somebody out to dinner. So I, I took someone, <laughs> I, I, I met somebody for drinks <laughs> and then we decided to have food in that, mm. in that process and I came home and, of course, told Jenny about it. It didn't even occur to me, oh, I just bought I dinner for this person, essentially. And she said, what are, what are you doing? What are you talking about? That's against our rules. <laughs> You're, you know. It sounds like a really weird rule. And it's definitely not a rule anymore. I mean, I don't even think we really have a rule. I mean, we have sort of like one rule, which is safety. Yeah, sure. But um, this was something that I just like, I had this weird feeling about. It wasn't just dinner. I, I think that one of the most valuable things that we have at this moment in society is that we can kind of upend the expectations that like dating, all this social conditioning that we have about dating, about like who's responsible for whom and in a date and like who pays and all this stuff is like, it, we don't have to do anything with the traditional model. But I do think that if you are a man and you take out a woman who is uh i don't know it it set it set a dynamic that i felt like you were writing checks that you couldn't really cash mm -hmm. where you were sort of maybe establishing like oh i'm gonna take care of you mm -hmm. and i wanted the relationships that we had outside of our primary relationship to be more like two equals mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like i didn't want someone feeling like i don't know like having those kinds of expectations of you because I didn't really want to like share you in that way. I think that's and really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause I, I guess I immediately assumed when you said that, that it was more about intimacy because like dinners can be a little bit more intimate than going to a bar or something like that. But that's a very interesting view on another reason why dinners might be a little bit more intimidating or not, I guess not intimidating, but just something that you wouldn't want to introduce into your relationship. Yeah, it was sort of like the idea of like, you can't pick up the check either. Like you should split the check or mm -hmm. you should like, if you have like an ongoing thing, like you can pick it up this time, they'll get you next time kind of thing. But it shouldn't be consistently like, I'm gonna, I got this. I also feel like there's a part of it where you were dating somebody for a minute who was brand new, like even newer than we were. And I was like, it feels like what you're doing is apologizing to her for your situation mm -hmm. by like saying, well, I can't be like your boyfriend, but I can take you out for a nice dinner kind of mm -hmm. thing where I was like, don't apologize. It's nothing yeah. to apologize for. Like she should 
be happy about your situation because it gives her more freedom. And like, if she's not happy about it, then y'all shouldn't be doing it. Kind of. Yeah, thing. I think you felt that discomfort because I didn't know what I was doing. I was just, mm -hmm. um, what do they say? You know, up the river with no paddle or something. Where I I didn't know how to present what I was looking for and what I could be to a person mm -hmm. without apologizing about it, like you said. Yeah. And it was very, very awkward for me because I always felt like I was saying, well, I, you know, I know I'm, I know I'm in a relationship. I know that's not ideal. And everything was about apologizing oh, instead of saying, Hey, I offer this really unique opportunity <laughs> to kind of <laughs> see somebody without worrying too much about He's about to get happen. out the presentation. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. I mean, like a timeshare. Exactly. Yeah, timeshare. But yeah, I, mean, I think like when you come into it apologetically, you're giving that person a reason to be like, hey, yeah, like you should be sorry. Mm -hmm. Like when maybe it wouldn't have occurred to them to have that dynamic. Yeah, I remember in one of the interviews, um, and then Dustin, and I was talking about how Dustin came back from a date and he was telling her how he said like, I'm not going to wine and dine you because I have a wife at home or something. <laughs> That's also Anna, not how you do it. Yeah. And then I was like, you should not say that. Yeah. <laughs> like, obviously, she's never going to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. a, it's a balance, yeah. right? And it's a, being able to communicate like clearly and like in a compassionate way, not just like, yo, I got my wife at home. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but this ain't it. <laughs> or like, let's pretend that this is a normal date. Right. And we'll just ignore the fact that I'm in a relationship. And like, I'll do everything that like, you know, you expect because I want you to ignore the fact that I'm in a relationship and like, well, we won't talk about it. Um, but yeah, I'm just really curious too of like how people responded when you started kind of getting into that mode. First of all, I know that there's like an uncomfortability for you to kind of go about that because probably typically, you know, this is something that you're used to. And now you're not only in a non-monogamous relationship and testing the waters, dating someone new, but you're trying to like break this barrier of what you're typically used to. So how was that for you? And like, how did you go along that and and get to a place that it felt comfortable for you oh it was super uncomfortable to begin with and very slowly progressed mm. to be i mean years to where i felt <laughs> more comfortable with it yeah um and honestly it it has it's turned into uh mostly seeing people who are in also already in the non-monogamous community um and probably a if I'm being honest, a preference of mine is to date somebody who already has a, a partner or multiple other partners. Um, because trying to thread that needle of dating somebody who's coming from the monogamous world is so difficult. Yeah. <laughs> because they, they're, you know, no matter how well I feel like I communicate or they communicate, it always turns into, well, we've had a few dates now. What does this mean? Mm. And for my part, I'm like, well, I don't know what it means. I, I it's just it's just dating. It's just you know? for the moment, for yeah. the sake of the moment, and yeah, that's a hard concept to sure. Yeah, come around for people, but yeah, actually, that's interesting. I've been reflecting on on that. Not dating people who are not non monogamous. I was thinking of like my past relationships, and I've mostly mostly dated like single men, and then they just see me as like the placeholder, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, until they find someone else. I think like, I don't know, this is a, a, a gross generalization, but I do feel like in dating and I date women and men, both women are generally better at multitasking when it comes to having multiple partners. Um, yeah, I, I've also had that experience where like things are going well with a, with a, a guy that you're dating, but then, you know, they get diverted by something and it's like you never existed. Yeah. And it's just sort of like, hey, man. Like I didn't need, I didn't need a letter, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but like, we were like not nothing to right. each other. It's just like sometimes it's it's amazing like how how single minded people can be about like what they're looking for. It's the communication on being able to say, okay, my part, my new partner is no longer okay with this, and I have to change this relationship. We can still be friends. Mm -hmm. Or like, hey, I'm doing this thing. 
I just don't have as much bandwidth right now for dating, but like, I'll let you know when I do again. Yeah, <laughs> I've um, said I've said that to people. I tried saying to somebody, "It's not the vibe I'm looking for," mm-hmm. and he like challenged me on it, like explain that, <laughs> and I was just like, "I'm trying to be nice and tell you I don't want to see you again. <laughs> like I don't like you." Yeah, it doesn't sound as good <laughs> as I don't have the bandwidth. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the bandwidth is is good. The last person I just was having a text message exchange with a guy that I went on one date with and just felt no chemistry with like he was fine a nice guy I'm sure he's perfect for somebody it just wasn't for me (laughs) he said so like when can we hang out again and I said uh I really enjoyed meeting you but it's not really the connection that I'm looking for which I think is like that's that's a really nice one and he said what type of connection are you looking for (laughs) and I was like physical chemistry but he, like, did he, you say that yes oh. I for, he forced me to because I, I did it's have true. a moment of like should I continue to be vague and, but it and then he just wrote back interesting oh <laughs> I was like <laughs> I guess I guess it's interesting I don't know I just I, how it, interesting that you're looking for someone with a physical <laughs> connection I know how unusual of me um I don't know I mean I, interesting maybe because he felt it and I and I didn't or interesting yeah. he wasn't expecting yeah, that yeah, to yeah. happen I don't know I think I do I give very good date in that like I don't I'm I'm pretty poker faced until the follow-up about how I felt <laughs> if I don't want to see someone again they probably won't know until they reach out to me mm. Uh, maybe I should be better about just being like, this was fun. <laughs> I don't know. I, <laughs> I wish I was around. brave. I wish <laughs> I was brave enough to say that to somebody's face. I don't know what's better. I mean, I guess there's no better. It's like, there's no better. What I mean, the most important thing is that you're being honest, you know, mm. whether it's the night of or a week later or whatever, it's you're still communicating. And that's that's what people are looking for is at least to know. Yeah. The fact that he followed up with a, uh, yeah follow-up question of um combating your (laughs) your statement is just showing that he is like in a way trying to compare himself of like oh what could I have done better in a way sure and I'm down to give constructive criticism I guess but there's nothing you can do about that right or you could just be as as she said that he felt the connection so he was just like really (laughs) sometimes guys are so oblivious about those things Sorry, guys, but it's true. (laughs) Just hanging my head. We still love you. We still love you, though. (laughs) So did you guys never want to have kids, or was this kind of a discussion you came to? No, we. we, as long as we've been together, we've been having the conversation, and we check back in about it every once in a while, and it's never been something that either of us wanted to move forward with. Well, and now it's pretty settled. The vasectomy is really good news. Yeah. I mean, I <laughs> my doctor did say that she makes a lot of money reversing vasectomy. So oh, really? not, that's another not another possible, point. but it would have to be pretty intentional. Yeah. Um, yeah. But another another good talking point for guys out there that are interested about it because you can get it and it's not final final. It can be reversed if it if it needs to be. I think all men should get vasectomies and then get it reversed when if you, you really decide kids. you're ready to have kids. <laughs> oh, I like that idea. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, it's not a big deal, guys. It's not hormonal. It doesn't really mess with your your body. You feel yeah. a little a little sore in the, in the, the stones for a yeah. week. I'm curious. I don't know if we've talked about it yet, but how long have you two been together? We met nine years ago. We got married like a year and a half after we met, which was sort of crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, it was crazy fast. If I was giving myself advice, I would have been like, whoa, 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 <laughs> hold on. Like we just moved in together, um, but it's worked out. So. <laughs> so by the time you decided to get married, what was your involvement in non-monogamy? How, how far had you gone? We, at that point, had dated people together and separately a bit Mm -hmm. um but we were i think at that stage mostly seeing people together like if we were to look back at the people that came to our wedding versus 
the people, if we were to get married, you know, next month, the people that we would invite, it would look really different. Yeah, I think there was a, there was definitely a point when we first got together where we were dating other people, but we had this idea in our mind that, well, we have our friends from the the regular world and then our friends from this weird party world that we're a part of. And we, we didn't connect at all at that point that this was probably going to become our closest friends, which you fools. Yeah. yeah, It turns out (laughs) to have definitely become our closest friends. Well, and I I organize parties now. Like I think I had this sense of like, well, we don't want to become like those people, like orgy people. (laughs) They can have like all these like robes. I'm going to make you guys t-shirts now. Yeah. (laughs) We're orgy orgy people. people. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. We sort of thought like, this will be a thing that we can dip into like every once in a while. And like, then we'll go back to our vanilla life. And no one will know. Yeah. <laughs> but then we started getting to know the people that we were partying with. And it turned out that we had a lot in common with them beyond sex and relationship. And how did you enter that community? We were dating a woman together and she invited us to her birthday party. And there we ran into the other woman who we'd gone on the double date with. And she invited us to a Hacienda Christmas party. Yeah, we essentially cornered her and said... Hey, I know this obviously didn't work out with the date because it's been a year and we are just <laughs> running into you did? again. But we're very cu- curious about this community and you seem pretty connected. How do we find out about parties and things? And I don't she that. said, oh, it's no problem. When do you want to go? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up. And so we went to a party with her. It was Hacienda. That was that was our first. And that was really our, our introduction to the play party scene definitely. Um, but on a greater scale, kind of to the community, because we started to meet more people then as we started to go to more events. Um, people that had been doing it for longer than us, people that were like us, just getting started all over the spectrum. So, Yeah, well, since that sounds like you guys have a lot of experience in play parties and also organizing them, which we'll get to what were some of the things that were maybe like difficult at the beginning, if there were any like I, I'm assuming you guys had a talk about expectations before, but was there ever a time where that didn't go as expected or some lessons that came along the way? I, yeah. I, I think that story about the the threesome that we had at the bar what? that I can't, that I bar? can't name. Oh, yeah. At uh, the bar. Well, how is that <laughs> answering the question? Well, it's answering you just wanna, the question. You just want to talk about that three No, I, I, love, <laughs> I do love the story, but coming out of it, it was pretty difficult for you. And I feel like I had uh, pushed that threesome because you were interested in the, the gentleman from the bar. Well, I think like the short answer is sort of that we we had a lot of misses when it came to communication, I think. Like we got in some conflict about not checking in before going to a date or an event. Um, And we definitely had some conflict around aftercare and how to like process things that had happened. Cause sometimes the things that would happen would be very intense. Um, Yeah. That was intense. It was intense. Yeah. It was, uh, I met a bartender at a (laughs) bar and like hooked up with him in the bathroom this is not like a very me thing to do, but I knew that you would really like it. I loved it. So I like texted him about it and he thought it was really sexy. And then we like went, the bartender was texting me and I was like, I'm going to come by with my partner just so they could meet. This wasn't the same night. It no, was... it was a different night. It was yeah. a different night just so they could meet. And then the bartender was like, I can close the bar right now. Like I can lock the door. Yeah, uh-huh. I, I was. And we could of... go downstairs. Can... And I, we were like, I was not expecting, like it wasn't, it sort of happened organically, yeah, but in a way wasn't that planned. it wasn't planned on my end. It just sort of happened in this very like porn way. Mm-hmm. And so we went with it, but like, yeah, it was intense. And I like, I don't know if I got upset with you afterwards or I was just like having feelings about like how intense the experience was. And I think you felt bad because you felt like you hadn't been there for me in some way, but like there was no way that you could have been there for me in the moment. You did everything right. It was just that. I didn't really know like how to process. Yeah, you just got afterwards. You just got emotional afterwards. I mean, literally when we were walking home from the bar, you yeah. started to get pretty emotional about it, and that backed me up to, oh God, what? How mm. I 
did I do this? Did I mess this thing up really bad? Did I push this situation? What was it that um, made you feel emotional or like what was there for you? I think that there was still at that stage like some shame around like being hypersexual and like being the focus of that kind of attention felt like a lot. And mm -hmm. also just like I need a lot of like emotional preparation before like going to parties or going on dates and stuff. And, and it's really sexy and cool when something happens spontaneously, but I think I just like, wasn't ready for it. So maybe I sort of went along with it because I didn't want to stop the momentum of this thing. And I, I think of it as a positive experience. It wasn't like traumatic or anything, but I think that's sort of what I was, what, what was going on afterwards when I was, like having a little cry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So now you would probably be like maybe another time or whatever. Like it was maybe also a lesson for you to kind of set a boundary there. I think so. Yeah. I, I'm much more communicative about how I'm feeling. Um, and it's taken me a really long time. Like I've just gotten to a stage where if I'm not like feeling something sexually, like I, I will just like stop. I mean, that sounds really yeah. dumb and basic, but like it's difficult. Yeah, mm. it's difficult not to let situation like sexual situations escalate to sort of the logical conclusion. Uh, even if you know, because sometimes you say like, okay, well maybe I'm not like feeling it right now, but if we go a little along a little further, I'll start feeling it more. And now I just say like, you know, I need to take a break, and then I say, okay, that I'm actually good. And I would argue that it's evolved, not, not awkward or, or strange in that you know what you want and you stop a situation that you're not enjoying. I'm also like much more particular now too. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, I think that like my standards for that sort of thing have gone way up too. So <laughs> I'm like much more likely to be like, you know what? I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with everything so far i'm gonna put a i'm put just a, gonna finish my drink <laughs> put a pin in it especially like in a play party situation where it's like you know there's so much going on maybe you don't want to like spend all night like in a corner with some person you want to be like yeah i want to like be back in the party so this was great it's <laughs> just not what did i say it's just not the connection that i'm looking for <laughs> i still really yeah. like that line though yeah. it is a good line i i think the one that didn't sound as great it was like the vibe what was the it? vibe yeah I that's not the vibe i was workshopping for. that and i did not get a good <laughs> you, response you, you, got, so. you got to the right one you got to the right one though so also like good. hey i just don't have the bandwidth at the moment right. to continue this there's also something you could say to someone at a party that when, works too when i um asked out uh he's my best friend one of my best friends now and um you know, it's completely platonic, like we're very much past the stage. But at first I had asked him out on a date. And what he said to me was, I think we're both really just polysaturated. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I like that too. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we it can be done in many ways. Yes. And I think that any way that you can do it that like takes the sting off of the rejection, uh, even if it's not like a hundred percent the truth is still a nice thing to do. I'm a big fan of like the diplomatic white lie when it hurts no one. Sure. <laughs> yeah, but I think that um, also someone I interviewed in the podcast, Valentin, Awake and Sexy is his Instagram. Uh, he was also saying that, yes, you know, if you can find a nice way of saying it, great. But also if you can't, better to say, uh, stop you know even <laughs> no. if it's like super awkward that don't yeah. say anything right yeah. because we're just trying to come up with the perfect way of saying it and there's really no perfect way so like better that you're not doing something that you don't want thank you guys so much for listening today don't forget to check out the next episode which is honestly even better than this one so if you enjoyed this one i'm sure that you will love the next one thank you so much for tuning in and i'll see you all next week